Avoiding the rumination trap today on the Daily Ish Show. Five, four, three, two, one, zero. Ignition. Lift off. Hey everyone, welcome to the Daily Ish Show, a show not just for rental housing providers, but Anybody looking to get a little bit more white space on their calendar, which to be honest with you right now, it has been at a premium for me. Holy crap, I've been busy, (laughs) but a very good kind of busy. So uh, I I apologize that I have not been, um, but not been, I've been more ish than daily, but uh, it's just the way life is right now. And uh, thank you all for so many congratulations between me and my bride and our family, which is expanding. And uh, for many of you, you know, we're having a baby girl. Liliana is due in... Uh, on October 16th. That's the due date. So we're really, really excited about that. So anyway, uh, thank you all for all that. But, but right now what we're going to be talking about is avoiding the rumination trap. Now, um, what am I talking about? Well, there's, there are, let me just, I'm going to paint a story for you. So let's pretend that you and I were just chilling on the couch and we decide that we're going to go to the movies. Okay. Ta-da. Let's say that you and I are, go- are on the couch and that you and I are going to go to the movies. And we we're going to take your car. We grab the grab the keys, we load up in the car. I'm riding shotgun. You stick your key in the ignition and you turn the key and nothing. Nothing. So what's our problem? Now, some of you are rapidly thinking of, well, it's a dead battery. It's a, yeah, uh, um, well, maybe it's a bad starter. Um, you know, something along those lines. Okay. And which I completely understand because my line of thinking when I first heard this was the exact same thing. Well, it could be lots of different things, right? Maybe a loose wire, right? Whatever. But really what's the problem? If you stop and think about it for just a second, the real problem is that we can't get to the movies. Okay. So what you're noticing is that instantly we be started to become an expert of the problem. We started to become, even if we're not necessarily suited for, for this, uh, this problem to say, okay, all of a sudden, all of us became car mechanics where most of us probably are not suited for that, where now we're starting to become an expert of the problem, dead battery, this and that, right? Now we're becoming experts what, for an area we're not even really suited for. So we start becoming experts of the problem. So now we're starting to think of like, okay, well, here I am. What, let's start thinking of some solutions. Let's start thinking of some solutions where we're going to get to that here in just a second. But this is where I see a lot of people in terms of bringing this back into the rumination trap where people just ruminate on things that have absolutely nothing to do with anything. They're just ruminating on, on issues that really are not moving you towards a desired outcome. Now, let me come back to that for just a second. This is why when I talk about in the, the Time Wealth, the Investor 2.0, when it's really, really important, to, it's very critical to have a clear personal vision for what it is you're trying to accomplish. Now, from that, many of you heard me say this many times where <clears throat> you have to avoid creating a business vision before you create a personal vision. Now, many, many people who I end up talking to have a very clear business vision Okay, I want 100 rentals. I want to flip 50 houses this year. I want, you know, 3 million in revenues, whatever. Okay. So you've created this business vision before you created a personal vision. Now, because you've created a business vision before you created a personal vision, what ends up happening is you create a life that exists to serve the business and rather than having a business that exists to serve your life. So the reason why this is so important, <clears throat> now getting back to the rumination part. When you start to have, when you're starting to just sit there and r- ruminate and just think about all these problems that you're trying to solve and you're not developing a solutions focused, let's go back to our example here in the garage. There we are sitting in the garage and we, and what's the problem? Okay. The car won't start, but is that really the problem? It's not really the problem right now. The problem is we can't get to the movies. So let's start a solutions focused based on our vision of getting to the movies. That's our vision. Okay. Our vision, our near vision that we want to get to the movies. So, okay. So we want to see this movie. How can we get there? Well, there's lots of different reasons. We could use my car. We could call an Uber. We could, um, call a taxi. We could take a bus. We could ride a horse. We could walk. You could take a hot air balloon. 
you could call you could call someone who has a helicopter, right? When you start, even though some of these these solutions might be a little ridiculous, you might go, well, wait a minute. There's literally thousands of different solutions that are possible about us getting to the movies, right? We could you could order in you could like or you know um, you know get get it on on uh, on on demand or whatever, right? So you can get all these different options are now available to you rather than us, us going to movies. So when you stay present in the moment and you go, hold on a second, what are we really actually trying to accomplish here? It was really interesting because earlier on today, now I, I wanted to do this piece for a while, but it was really kind of interesting. There was someone who I'm, I'm working with, a uh, coaching client, and he called me today and, and he realized that his problem wasn't the fact that he couldn't get marketing out because he thought in order to buy a property, he had to get, send out these thousands of letters and try to get, try to get people to re respond back. And so he could buy a property from him. I'm like, man, all you need to do is get in front of the people who are trying to sell properties or who've already done all that heavy lifting for you and can bird dog deals for you. So if you're out there trying to buy a property and I hear this all the time, man, I can't buy, I can't find any properties to buy. You know, everything's overly expensive. Yeah, everything's overly expensive. But if you were to get in front of, I don't know, let's say for argument's sake, <clears throat> you were actively trying to buy a property and you're not trying to buy a property with, you don't have any money in the bank or anything. I'm talking about you actively, you, you are qualified. You have an ability to buy properties. You just can't find anything that's worth buying right now. Okay. Well, what if you were to get in front of, I don't know, half a dozen wholesalers? You know, the, the we buy houses, people who nail signs up to the, you know, all over the neighborhoods. If you were to contact, I don't know, maybe a dozen or two of those folks and had them where you constantly reached out to them and they're your bird dogs. Don't you think that that could be a really easy mechanism to, to allow them to do all the heavy lifting and you pay them a bird dog fee? Yeah. Right <laughs> now, all of a sudden you're not working so hard. Now, all of a sudden you've got two dozen people who are actively out looking for you. Now in, in your market or your buy box or whatever it is that you're looking to buy. So when you start focusing on the solution, right, rather than the problem, all of a sudden you become much more confident. You're creating a positive state within yourself and you're operating under a clear purpose and a clear vision for what it is you're actually trying to accomplish. So that's really it. So don't sit there and ruminate and just think about all the things that are going wrong. Focus on the things that are going right and actually, I don't know, move the needle a little bit. So anyway, um, all right. Well, that's all I have. I hope you guys are having a, a good plans for Easter. We have uh, really no plans, which is actually kind of nice. So we, we're going to go to church, and uh, I don't really have a whole heck of a lot. I've got a got a busy day, good busy morning tomorrow. But other than that, just catching up on uh, on tax day stuff. So all right, everybody. I hope you're having an amazing day. I hope you're having an amazing weekend. And please be sure to place a value on your free time because if you don't, someone else will. Most important, there is no amount of money that will make time irrelevant. Have an awesome day. Have a great weekend. Happy Easter, everybody. And we'll see you next time.